Just put the earphones on. Well, that's karate people. <laughs> okay, get over here. Just make sure the sound uh, carries. What you put the uh, earphones on? Yeah, I know. I'll be editing out so I can't start. Okay, testing one, two, three, four. Do you hear it? Yeah. Okay. Do you have both of us in in here now? So. Uh, We're both in there. Okay, you can leave. Yeah, yeah. I have tea. <laughs> well, I'm sure she'll be. Um, no, no, she'll be chewing on that bone. See, George has a cookie. Go get it. Okay. 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 This is uh, November the first, nineteen ninety-seven, and uh, I'm very honored to have Mr. Simon Laley from Hong Kong, uh, England, and Borneo, and other places of interest, Dave. who uh, has come visited us uh, after his uh, absence of a couple of years now, right? Yeah. Our well, la last time yeah. we were together, we were sitting at the kitchen table, and right. you were telling me about this fabulous new possible Weiji Kata that you had discovered, and uh, then we went down to... Uh, the Brockton Dojo, and you performed a, a number of kata. Since then, we've had a couple of summer camps where we have worked with it. The official position on Super Empe is that it is not an official Weiji kata, right. but that it is a supplementary kata, much like Kanchiwa, Seiching, and uh, Seiru. And it, it's even more flexible than that. Uh, it is a, a kata that people can uh, sort of, we call it wagey size it. Mm -hmm, sure. So we're taking movements from wagey and where you, when you did it, you goju sized it. And uh, there are a lot of movements which we recognize as goju right. in the kata. So we took some of those uh, movements and, and uh, converted them into more wagey movements. We're fascinated with the idea of learning more about where it came from and also your experiences when you went back to China after spending a summer camp here mm -hmm. and seeing all of the different ways that we sure. experimented with it. And uh, so I'd, I'd like to start this, uh, this bull session uh, by asking you what exactly have you learned about Super Empe since we last talked? Well, I've learned that there's more wage unit than I realized, first of all having spoken to some Weiji people and got their feedback. And whilst I've always had a, a very reserved <coughs> opinion on Weiji, on the, on the Super Play form, about it being a maybe the, the lost or not taught Weiji form, talking to some Weiji people, it seems that there's um, more to it than I had uh, suspected. Now, when you talk, you talk to various Weiji people. Who exactly mm -hmm. have you spoken to? Are these senior people, are Okinawans, or are these uh, just Weiji teachers? They're, by and large, they're American students mm -hmm. who are senior in terms of the number of years they put in. Oh, okay. They don't belong to any major organization, so they're kind of uh, very private people. Mm -hmm. But they give me some opinions and feedback, and I spend hours and hours with them, um, just looking at the Weiji forms Sanchin, Sanseru, and Seisan, and uh, just comparing ideas and uh, comparing um, out loud thoughts. Uh, I'd like to say that I probably gojified the form uh, without knowing it because my background is goji ryu. But with the little knowledge of Weiji that I've always had, I tried to Weijify it as much as I could not as much as I could, but I tried to see the Weiji in there without putting it in there myself. Um, and then I, when I let me interrupt something. Uh, when you say you, you tried to Weiji size it, uh, I think what a lot of people w are really interested in, in uh, discovering is the way the kata is actually performed by the Chinese, mm -hmm. so that we can make our own comparisons right. uh, and not sort of having it translated too mm -hmm. many times before we, we get it. So uh, the fir when you first performed the kata uh, a couple of years, when was that, 1994? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, maybe, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. W when you, you did it there, you, you weren't consciously trying to do it you, with goju or weiji influences on it. No, I was doing it just the way I was taught it. The way you, um, you were taught it, okay. That's but when I, when I was at the camp last year, now actually just now kind of wasn't too accurate, 
when I was at the camp last year, I um, performed it as I learnt it in China. I'd never change that. I'd always keep that at the same way. But I'd try to maybe show the little way to you which I knew so I could try to suggest ways in which it might be a Weiji link um, without giving a false impression of the form itself. Mm. I would never change it consciously to anything uh, that it isn't. Mm. Um, that, and I was very, very strict upon my teacher and my teachers in Fujo about learning the way that it should be. And the way I'm teaching it now is the way, as far as we know, is the way that Zhao Tzu He was teaching it because my teacher was a student of Zhao Jinchun and Zhao Jinchun taught it the way he'd been taught it and he was taught the form by Zhao Tzu He. So my teacher is like a second generation from uh, Zhao Tzu He and as far as he knows it's not been changed at all and he, he taught it to me the same way he was taught it all those years ago so um, given that my teacher's in his early 90s now... Um, Mid-90s, 95? Yeah, mid-90s, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think he was born in 1904. Mm. Um, given that, or allowing him to have a bit of forgetful license there, I guess, what were the years gone by, um, I now have it the way that it was taught to him as best that he can recollect, which as far as he's concerned is 100% the way because he put a lot of thought into going back and communicating it to me the way that it was done because he knows that I'm trying to do some very, very serious, deep research on this. Yeah. It was funny to have the, um, to have the different teachers um, teach me different ways on different occasions. And when I got them all together and I, I said, OK, guys, please tell me which is the right way and to hear them, watch them argue and bicker and, uh, and point fingers at each other, that was amusing to see. Um, but they did make a very big effort to give me the, the true story. I think we also have to be aware that when they say this is the way it should be, I mean, the, that's the way they perceive it should be at that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, right. off, we, we always got into trouble in the, the early days of Weiji in America uh, by going back and discovering a totally different set of movements or a different interpretation or a different uh, uh, focus mm -hmm. on a particular kata. And it just, ha you know, it's, it evolves. The style it has evolved. There's no sure. question about it. And at any point in time, everyone always feels this is the real way. No one's right. going to do something that's not the real way. No. Right? No. So, I mean, these changes are sort of insidious mm -hmm. and, and sort of creep into the style, and people aren't even aware of it. And uh, for instance, when, when you did the Super Empe on film, I saw many movements that I recognize as pure goju. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. So now your teacher may have taught you a movement and it may have been similar, but in picking it up, you're obviously going to, going to fall back on that which you feel real comfortable with. Sure. You're not yeah. going, going to be able to make a change, especially when something is very close. Mm -hmm. If you taught me a goju wauki that was close to the face like that, I would you know, automatically right. change it. So mm -hmm. I, I still feel it was what you taught me, but the change is drastic right. when taken when, to a bonkai or to a, the application of that movement. And, and I think that we can't play, place too much importance on what someone says at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. This is the way it, it is. That's right. dangerous because all of a sudden it sets up people as arbitrary experts mm -hmm. in the subject at that given point in time. This right. is the time capsule as it exists in 1994. Mm -hmm. This is exactly the way I learned it. And then all of a sudden, 97 comes, and all of a sudden it's different. Well, which right. one is right? You know, and Students get all awfully shook up over this kind of discussion. Teachers sure. get all upset because they say, gee, they changed the system on me. Mm -hmm. It's not a change. You know, it's an evolving system, and your movements are going to look different than my movements. Mm -hmm. And we have to feel comfortable about that. The Chinese always felt comfortable about that. Right. We're the ones who impose our restricted uh, viewpoints on them. We're the ones mm -hmm. that say, tell me exactly the way Xu Shiwa mm -hmm. did it. Well, right. what are they going to say? That I, I've changed the movements? Mm -hmm. They're going to say, you know, I, that's the way Xu Shiwa taught my teacher who taught it to me. And it's exactly the same, Simon, as right. it was 200 years ago. Sure. That is absolute hogwash. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, 
with this in mind, I, I think we have to look at Super Empe with a sort of a, an open mind. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and there are certain movements that probably haven't changed a great deal, although, from what you told me, some of the movements have changed quite a bit. Yeah. You know, the yeah. sequence of movements? Sure. I mean, I can see teachers in Okinawa doing Seisan, for instance. Mm -hmm. And some of the, like Tommy Osi, doesn't do this bl secondary block after the hammer. He just right. does a, a movement like that, mm -hmm. okay? Well, that's a drastic difference, but yet it's still in sequence, and we right. can see that it's an abbreviation. And I think we have to sort of look at Super Empe with the same, same eyes yeah. and viewpoints. So the form becomes more of a concept. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, now, sure. what can we learn from Super Empe? Bill Glasheen, uh, Ron Klein, there's a, probably a core group of 20 mm -hmm. summer camp people right. who have taken this form back and really have worked hard mm -hmm. trying to, to, to understand it and wage size it to a certain extent, right. but yet on the other hand, trying to make it so that they can do it in a comfortable way. And they, they've, they've learned a great deal about it. But now they're interested in how does what we've, are cha what we've changed it, we've modified mm -hmm. it a little bit, how does that compare with what perhaps now you've seen on your second right. trip over there? Mm -hmm. And uh, I understand that tonight uh, we're going to go to a, one of my workouts, but uh, we're, we may get Simon to do it, but we're not going to videotape any of this. And hopefully when you go back to China... I would really like to see you videotape the old man mm -hmm. uh, and, and, you know, the, the second generation. Right. And then you have to comment, how much has, has this changed just in a few short years? Mm -hmm. Because now all of a sudden Americans and, and uh, the, the people of the West, when we go over there, we're no longer looking with the microscope. Now we're right. looking at concepts mm -hmm. more than where is this little finger in this particular point in the kata. Right. It would be in interesting if you can sort of be objective about it and, and see how much the kata has evolved and changed within a few short years to see if, in fact, uh, the essence of the kata is being taught now and that you have the essence of the kata that you can share with uh, the rest of us. I'd like to, at some point, um, go back with a, a senior Weiji person so that we can explore the, the forms from Weiji, the three main forms, and uh, just have a, an open forum there mm -hmm. at the old man's house that I think will be very, very beneficial for everyone. So hopefully that will happen maybe in the next uh, half a year or so. Perhaps yeah. somebody will come forward but and come Again, it's hard for us to go over there with our, uh, our way of understanding what we're doing and sort mm -hmm. of imposing our will on them. They do the movements a lot differently for mm -hmm. different reasons than we do it. I wrote in the Bogesha article, you know, this time capsule view yeah. of Weiji that we you know, they, they, they were impressed with the fact that we captured a, a moment in time mm -hmm. in the Chinese martial arts history, and we've sort of held on to that, that, that era. But, you know, they're not interested in that, you mm -hmm. know, any more than we are interested in the way Babe Ruth swung the bat. Yeah. You know, now we have all kinds of new heroes that swing the bat entirely differently, and, and uh, that's their way of understanding the, the sets or the forms. They're simply tools. Mm -hmm. We tend to place an awful lot of importance on it. However, all that being said, as historians, we're still interested in, in seeing our time capsule view and if we can find something on a parallel level right. that's taking place in China. That would be fascinating to compare. And, you know, but again, we're, uh, we're Westerners, and, and yeah. we, we, are, we do look at what we do a lot differently than, than them. I think the little circle of uh, students that study under the master and the master himself I think they'll be uh, I think they'll be impressed and amused and flattered if uh, mm. if someone goes over there with me and, and just uh, explores this, this whole concept with them the fact that we go that far and share it with them and ask questions I think they'll be uh, mm. well I, I know they'll be very very open to discussion and to comparisons and and just to a bit of um, a bit of investigation like that so I'd like, like to see happen. Bill Glashin go over because he's the one who uh, has spent the most time working with uh, right. Super MP. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll have to talk with him about that. Yeah, I'll be at the camp next year, so maybe we can talk then, mm. um, if it does happen before then. Well, you're, when you're going back when? This year? I want to go back in, um, in November, yeah. This yeah, is 1997. That's next month. Yeah, that's today's uh, October 1st. Right, okay, yeah. Yeah, All so right. next month. Do you have a video camera now? Yeah, I've got, um, I've got one of my teachers on video doing the form. Uh, not in the old man, 
but uh, one of my main teachers is doing the form and the way he does it is I mean largely it's the way that I do it but he has his own little idiosyncrasies of course yeah. um, I'm taking my my main line from the the old man um, but uh, the way that this young guy has kind of changed it or personified it or adapted it is interesting as well but, but see that's that's that whole idea he's taken something as a tool mm -hmm. and made it useful for him rather right. than trying to do what was good for the old man and saying this has to be has to be good for mm -hmm. me yeah and you know the round uh, peg in the square hole sure by the way this is Tia uh, <laughs> those of you who watch videotapes know that our dogs are always around and they're mu very much of the part of the family she's a Colby pit bull <laughs> very very affectionate as Simon is finding out okay Tia that's enough come on Sit down. Yeah. They're all camera hogs. I don't know what it <laughs> is. Go lay down. Okay. So tell us about what you've been doing in the last couple of years, Simon. Well, this past okay. year, or oh, year and a half, I've been in Hong Kong. Um, now we know you got married too. Yeah. So yeah, that was case. That was that was this year. The um, Simon watches out there. <laughs> I um. I actually went to Taiwan. I came back from Fuzhou, went back to England for a short time, and um, I then went out to Taiwan to do some work over there, and the work kind of fell through. Uh, I did find some some teachers there, some crane teachers there, eating crane teachers, and I'm in touch with them. And I want to go back and do some study with those guys at some point. Mm -hmm. But uh, from Taiwan, when that kind of fell through, of course I didn't want to come back to England. So I just jumped on a plane and went to Hong Kong and um, got myself some work in Hong Kong, working at the new airport. And now, you mentioned the feeding crane, uh, or mm -hmm. the e eating crane. crane? Eating, feeding. Eating, feeding. Okay, yeah. that's Dr. Or, Liu was or, here. Or uh, crane. Dr. Liu was here two years ago at camp. Right. You, you missed him? or you? I missed him. I was here last year, yeah. yeah. Okay, that, that, was, uh, that was great. Great experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, no, um, in fact, last year was when... Um, was when Kimo Wall and the um, Chang. Uh, that was Liu, I thought. Wasn't yeah, it? Louis Chang. Louis yeah. Chang. I met okay. him, of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then you were here during so, that yeah, period. Yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah. Last year, but two camps ago. All right. Two camps right. ago. Okay. Yeah. So um, I stayed in touch with uh, with um, Yi Chang, and uh, I want to go back to Tainan at some point and spend some some good time with him because. He obviously has a, a very, very strong link to this this whole question. But um, whilst I was in Hong Kong, I found myself a dragon teacher, and I studied some dragon. So um, next year at the camp, I'll be teaching the Suprempe or doing research with that. But I'd like also to teach some dragon if there's any interest for students wanting to learn some dragon, because I think the dragon has some. Um, well, we know it has some significance to Wei Jiu whether the Hong Kong dragon has much significance remains to be seen. Uh, the Hong Kong people Hong Kongified the Fujianese dragon which was sort of um, cantonified by the Cantonese people as well so what we're seeing in Hong Kong may be a far cry from the, the Fujian dragon but I, I think certain traits will be there mm. and it'll be good to, uh, to look at the dragon next year. The first form I learnt wasn't really a form I was told but it kind of um, reminds me of, of a Sanchin. Mm. It seems to obey certain Sanchin regulation criteria. So we can look at that as well. Now, was that any breathing concern with that, or the, like throwing the hands? Um, Sound there, like there a was rutting there animal? There was, but nothing, nothing audible, nothing, no big focus on the, on the up, down, forward, and back. Mm. I know that's there, but that wasn't really sort of maximized. Mm. So that may have been kind of lost a little bit or sacrificed in the translation. Yeah. But next year, if I get back to Fujian, which I certainly hope I shall, I'll be going in the back door and finding myself uh, some dragon teachers there. I know a girl and uh, she, her grandfather, he was a, a leading dragon man. So if I can get to her, I can probably find myself some good dragon teachers there, or at least one that I can show him what I've been doing and uh, gain his confidence and learn some dragon stuff from him. So I think the dragon um, accent is going to be interesting. And then of course I can cross-reference that with uh, 
Master Gore, the old man in Fujo City. Mm. So next year I should have some very, very good stuff, um, even more good stuff to impart and to share and to, uh, to exchange and expand upon with the Waiji clan. What are you doing with Goju rule, if anything? Um, yes, I am. I'm, I'm not letting go of my Goju, of course. I'm still looking at that and researching that at the same time, although the, the Waiji question has kind of uh, superimposed itself on the on on, on the Goju research. But I'm still I would think I would think the Goju uh, link would be easier to uh, to trace than the Waiji link. Um, it's not easier, but um, I'm I'm keeping I'm keeping my both heads going at the same time, mm. my mind open. And uh, I'm, I'm researching both at, at the same time as best I can. How's your research with San Chin? The history yes. of San Chin coming along. Good. Anything um, you want to share with the? Uh, I'm, I'm doing four books right now. Um, I can't say who with right now, but I'm doing four books on San Chin. Three books are on the technical aspects of San Chin, a pictorial um, expose, and the the fourth title, or maybe the first title. Is going to be uh, more like a book of Sanchin essays written by leading uh, Sanchin dignitaries all over the world. And I hope uh, George Matson will contribute <laughs> for that one as well. But I'm trying to get as much input from Sanchin from as many different angles as I can. And then I'll give my own kind of overview perspective in that book as well. And that will, if it's volume one, it will set the precedence for the other three technical books. If it's volume four, it'll bring all those three books into a, a technical knot. And um, hopefully it'll be a a, a very very uh, exciting and uh, eye-opening and thought-provoking set of books. So that's my my main project now in terms of the literary world. All right. Anything else you want to add before we uh, stop here? Um, no. I, I hope next year there'll be there seems to be more interest in the Supremepe form than there was last year. My group last year was very, very small, but they were very, very dedicated and very, very sincere. It seems that this small group has expanded now, and more people have given it some thought, and I hope next about year... 20, 20 yeah, people. Yeah, that's about four times as much as yeah. last year. Plus, there are a lot of outsiders that have uh, picked it up from the tape and are st doing what essentially what we did at the, at the camp. You know, it's not such a religious experience. It's just something fun, and they're playing right. along with it, and they're, they're sure. having a good time. And, and That's it. Martial art should be fun. It's interesting. Yeah. It's fascinating. It's serious, but it's fun. That's right. Um, I'm going to be on the... I've got an email address now. I should be maybe on the net quite soon with a website, but um, I'm definitely emailable now. So hopefully there'll be some more interaction directly with me from interested parties or confused parties or whatever. Great. Um, I welcome anyone who's got anything sincere to say and anything intelligent to say, and I, um, I welcome criticism as long as it's in a in a positive vein from which we can all benefit. And I hope this tape is going to be um, a part of that uh, that research drive. Great. Thank you Great. very much indeed. Thank you. My pleasure. Are you finished here? <laughs>